Tesla doesn't just sell cars, they use them for something far more valuable. Every time you're behind the wheel, you're essentially giving it away for free. Data is the new oil, and Tesla isn't just drilling for it. They're sitting on top of one of the richest wells in the world. Tesla is the largest AI project on Earth. Each Tesla generates 40 terabytes of data in a year. To put that into perspective, it's like 8,000 HD movies or more data than a single Netflix user streams in an entire decade. While you are driving the car, what you're actually doing is you are annotating the data because you are steering the wheel. You're telling us how to traverse different environments. Multiply that by over 7 million Teslas on the road and the amount of data becomes mind-blowing. And more than any automaker or government has ever collected. And this isn't just about collecting data for safety and efficiency. It's about building an incredibly detailed profile on you. How you drive, how you brake, how fast you respond in an emergency, just about everything. And here's the twist. That data is far more valuable than the car itself. Everyone's training the network all the time is what it amounts to. Whether the autopilot is on or off, uh, the network is being trained. Every mile that's driven uh, for the car that's hardware to or above, is training the network. Tesla, more than any one company in the world, has figured out how to monetize that data into three major ways, ways most people don't even realize. Tesla's really built one of the largest moving data centers in the world, and it's also a reminder of how much information about you is out there. I dare you to go online right now, and within a second, you're gonna find yourself, as well as even your family members, on some of these shady data broker sites. Data brokers are constantly out there collecting huge amounts of personal personally identifiable info from places like public records and social media accounts. They aggregate, analyze, and sell your info to those with interest in this data, and just like that, you get on these lists. My recent report just came out, and you can see Delete Me's privacy expert actually reviewed over 6,100 listings. They found my personal info being sold by six different data brokers, and they went ahead and removed every one of those. Unfortunately, you can't erase the internet, but you can erase yourself from those lists. So one of the best things I did was sign up for Delete Me back in 2023, and that's why I'm so glad that they're sponsoring today's video. And what makes Delete Me actually work is that they continue to scan the web every single month and delete listings that data brokers are trying to sell. You can go ahead and try it yourself at joindeletemecom slash kimjava, and be sure to use the code kimjava to get 20% off. All right, let's get back to it. It's kind of funny to me that most people still think of Tesla as just another car company, because under the hood, it's really more of a data harvesting machine. Now, does Tesla sell your data? Not exactly. It's actually a lot more complicated than that. It's really more about the synergy between the umbrella of companies. The cars are really just the tip of the iceberg. It's about where companies like Tesla, and I said like because they aren't the only one, but they control the data that powers how you think, how you drive, just about everything. By the way, if you guys enjoy these type of deep dives, please consider subscribing to our channel. We know that more than a million of you tune in every single month, but 86% of you aren't subscribed. So if you subscribe, it doesn't cost you anything. And my commitment to you is that I will bring you the best content out there possible. Let's talk about the cars. Here's how it works. So Tesla's fleet of cameras and sensors tracks your every move, speed, turns, even your reactions. This data is uploaded to their servers. The more you drive, the bigger their database gets. Now Tesla's advantage is unlike anyone else because they're not just using a simulation to gather this data. They're using the real deal. I mean, the crazy thing is the network is predicting paths it can't even see with incredibly high accuracy. It can't see around the corner, but, but it's saying the probability of that curve is extremely high, so that's the path. And it nails it. And this is how these cameras are helping to build their AI empire. And investing expert Kathy Wood believes the company can 10x in the next five years. We believe that the entire ecosystem associated with autonomous uh, taxi networks is going to be worth eight to ten trillion dollars in terms of revenue generation in the next five to ten years. And if you want to put that in context, the, the entire GDP of the world today is about 130 trillion. So 10 trillion is going to move the needle. 90% of that valuation 
comes not from the electric vehicle, but from this robo-taxi platform. Tesla's cameras take in all these visuals and they used to send this to a giant dojo computer, which was like a mega brain that would process all this data. But in the last few days, they've actually disbanded the dojo brain because the new hardware inside these vehicles is so smart, it doesn't even need that anymore. Tesla has a uh, hundred times more cars with of the full self-driving hardware than everyone else combined. Nobody has the fleet. Tesla has this huge advantage, right? Because their cars are on the road 24 seven, taking in all this data in order to build the largest AI model for autonomous driving. Even the godfather of self-driving, Waymo co-founder Anthony Lewandowski said Tesla had a huge lead in the game. Quote, Tesla has examples of maybe a million times more data than Waymo does in terms of all scenarios of driving. And this is why Tesla's all in on vision and they don't need to rely on LiDAR or radar are like other self-driving cars do. And before you guys freak out about privacy, Tesla says it's all anonymized and there's even a tab in here under software data sharing that explicitly says, we do not sell your data to anyone for any purpose, period. They blur external camera data and confirm that the data is not in any way linked to your VIN. And by the way, it's not just Tesla that does this. Pretty much all modern cars that are built today have the ability to collect personal and technical data. Now here's where things start to fall into kind of a weird gray area. We're now starting to teach the cars more and more about us, what we like, what we think, and even what we like in terms of companionship. So check this out. Grok, can you explain what you are? I'm an AI assistant with a female voice designed to help you with all sorts of questions and tasks, like finding info or explaining things in a friendly, conversational way. Think of me as a helpful friend who's always ready to chat with a bit of humor and a lot of facts. Inspired by folks like Douglas Adams, and Tony Stark's Jarvis. What do you want to dive into today? Who developed you? I was created by XAI, a company working on building artificial intelligence to accelerate human scientific discovery. And what happens to all the information that I share with you? Any info you share with me is processed to give you the best responses possible. But don't worry, I don't store it long-term or get nosy with it. My creators at XAI Make sure your data is handled responsibly, following strict privacy policies to keep things secure and confidential. All right, so that is a little bit concerning, right? We don't know exactly what is happening to that data. Yes, they're telling us that it's anonymized, so they don't know exactly who I am, but they're learning a lot about people. Okay, so even if it is all anonymized, all this input is definitely being used to train the machine. And even though they don't store any of my personal data, this data is definitely being used for more than just training the car. So is this progress? Are you cool with your car potentially riding you out to Tesla AI? I'm gonna let you guys decide because you see Tesla also sells their own insurance and they don't price it like traditional insurance companies that use demographic averages they actually price it based on your own driving behavior. Use the data that's captured in the car. In the driving profile of the person in the car, assess correlations and probabilities of crash and be able then to assess a premium on a monthly basis for that customer. The amount of data that is available with the customer's permission to use is not available in any other product or any other vehicle in the world. So this gives us a unique advantage in terms of information. The benefit of all this is that it allows Tesla to cut out the middleman and give you a lower rate, which we all want, right? If you want to pay more for insurance, you can, uh, but if you want to pay less, uh, please don't drive so crazy. And people can make a choice. Like, okay, they want to drive aggressively. In the case, it'll be higher insurance. You're more careful in the driving and it'll be less. This all sounds great. It saves you money. And Tesla even offers that it saves lives because this data is also being used in full self-driving to help prevent accidents. But what if this data gets into the wrong hands? Think targeted ads. I mean, that's not too far off, right? Meta's already doing this. I talked to a friend, an ad pops up, and actually Jeep is already putting ads directly into their cars. So it's really not too far off. But what about government surveillance? I mean, that sounds pretty scary. 
Think about this. Tesla also collects data on roads themselves. They know where people brake too hard, where the roads are rough, and where accidents are most likely to happen. You see how this kind of data could be extremely valuable to governments that are working on improving traffic flow or road safety. Now, I'm not saying they are, but theoretically they could license or even sell this kind of infrastructure data. I mean, it's pretty obvious that they already use it themselves to plan out where their superchargers are, but it's an invisible revenue stream that keeps growing every second a car's on the road. I mean, it's kind of scary, to be honest. Mm. So the neural links connecting to your brain, sending the signals to Grog, and then Grog can actually understand those signals at a binary level, um, as opposed to having to translate it into words. And so greatly improve the efficiency with which you can use your neural link device. This is the kind of stuff that keeps me up at night. Neuralink, one of the other companies under this data umbrella, is literally trying to connect your brain to machines. I mean, I am not making this stuff up. Yeah, this is going to sound pretty weird, but achieve a sort of symbiosis with artificial intelligence. With a high bandwidth brain machine interface, I think we can actually go along for the ride and we can effectively have the option of merging with AI. This tech could pull neural data straight from your head. We're talking your thoughts, your intentions, and there's just so much medical benefit to being able to do all this. This tech right now has already helped eight patients this year with various degrees of brain injury. And then next year we'll be doing the blind sight implement, which will enable people who are completely blind, like if they've lost both eyes and optic nerve, and still be able to see. This same tech could one day be in your car, meaning you could drive with just your thoughts. It's a direct link between your brain and advanced AI. At some point, you could get cybernetic enhancements, something that massively augments intelligence and allows you to communicate at ultra high speeds. I have lots of questions. I mean, this is not just your personal habits anymore. This is your mind. I mean, no lie detector needed, right? And if Neuralink can read it, I mean, who else can read it? So obviously there's a lot of ethical concerns when it comes to brain data usage. And honestly, there's no regulations in place yet. It won't just be wrong. Uh, there will be many AI, but there will be at least four major AIs, maybe five, just in the United States. So what's your if this is a double-edged sword or a single-edged sword or what. But it, it became very obvious after a while that this was going to happen, whether I participated or not. I'd rather be a participant than a spectator, and I can focus on AI safety. Neuralink is basically giving Tesla access to your neural data, every thought, every impulse. And Elon Musk has also talked about some pretty sci-fi stuff, like being able to take your neural data from Neuralink and put that into robots. Remember, he also has the humanoid robot Optimus. We're not just talking iRobot movie stuff. This is happening right now, and it's closer than you may think. And it could get to the point where you could upload your memories and, and essentially have a, a saved version of yourself. Download that into a robot body if you want, or a cloned version of your original self. Okay. I know it sounds crazy, but it's also brilliant from a business standpoint. And I know it raises all kinds of philosophical concerns. And it's also so, so interconnected from the cars to the AI, to the mind chip, to the robot. You see where I'm going with all this. With Optimus, we're able to reuse the autopilot computer. You have the same computer that controls the car. It's a small battery pack that's similar to the car battery pack. And then the AI that's in the car is similar to the AI that will be in Optimus. So Tesla is collecting insane amounts of data and there are so many parallels. The data also feeds into the boring company's Hyperloop, which uses their road and traffic info to be able to plan its tunnels and routes and essentially optimize urban transport. It's also laying the groundwork for Tesla's robotaxis using their real-time data for smarter ways to beat traffic. The, the economy of the future, I think is gonna look sort of quite different from where it is today. There will be no shortage products and services for anyone. Anyone will be able to have any products and services that they want. The productivity gains from AI and robotics are just astounding to think about. Is this just the start of the new world, the AI revolution? And the real question is, are you okay with it? Are you okay with giving up some of your privacy, some of your data, if it could improve your life, decrease traffic, cure diseases? save you money. Let me know what you guys think of all this. Are you down for it? Do you think it crosses a line? And what will this new world look like? If you look into a crystal ball right now and see the future, the, the goal test previously was accelerating the advancement of sustainable energy. And then the reason I pursued that rather than AI, because I could have pursued AI from the beginning, 
was because I was confident that sustainable energy was a single edge sword. Only it, like it was only a good edge. For AI, it is more of a double edge uh, sword risk. But I think it most likely will be good and most likely will bring immense prosperity. And, you know, it's going to figure out how to cure every disease.